Hello and welcome to this new episode of Mysteries of Science. My name's Dan and I'm the editor of Science and Nature, the monthly magazine from the team behind the week junior. And I'm Michael, the junior editor. In each issue of Science and Nature, we explore the universe through in-depth features, news stories, awe-inspiring images, interviews with top experts and much more. And in each episode of the podcast, we investigate a weird or unexplainable area of science or the natural world. Hey, welcome on board, Michael. It's great to have you joining us on the podcast. I hope you've brought your very best investigating game with you. What case are we looking into today? Well, Dan, you've thrown me in at the deep end here with a totally mind-bending mystery. Now, have you ever wondered what would happen to your life if you'd taken some different decisions? Not sure where this is going. What if you didn't get up one day or chose not to go to school? What if you turned left at the bottom of the street rather than right? How would that have changed your life? Maybe if you were running a bit late and missed the train, you might not have made it to your interview on time, Dan, and missed the chance to become the editor of Science and Nature. And what if there were other universes where all those other possibilities did happen? What if the cosmos that we live in is just one of many? A multitude of universes. Not a universe, but a multiverse. In a mind-boggling multiverse of different possibilities, every alternative reality is possible. There could be a universe where you're a pop star, one where you're a prime minister, or maybe, Dan, even one where you're a star striker for Liverpool. I love this idea. So you could just be anything in any universe. Let's go in search of these missing realms. I, I quite fancy locating that universe where I'm the overlord of everybody. And let's blast off into space once again. Everybody strap in and join us for the ride. This is Mysteries of Science. Michael, I believe that you're a little bit of a superhero fan out here. Marvel movies, a bit of Spider-Man and Batman, that kind of thing. Absolutely, huge fan. Yeah, well, I'm not entirely sure, but um, the idea of multiverses, like parallel universes, um, alternate realities, all that kind of stuff, is just basically home turf bread and butter, isn't it, for comic superheroes. So visitors from other dimensions are always popping in, and um, I, th I believe that there's a new film coming out called Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness. So without giving away any spoilers to our listeners, can you, can you sort of let us know how this all works? Yeah, absolutely. So any of our listeners who are comic book fans or comic book movie fans as I am might already be a little bit familiar with the idea of a multiverse. And in the comic book world, it basically allows us to see different versions of our favorite characters. So for example, in one of my favorite films of all time, Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse, we see different versions of Spider-Man, including my personal favorite, Spider-Ham, who is a spider who was bitten by a radioactive pig, which <laughs> just goes to show that in the multiverse, anything is possible. I think what we need to investigate in this episode is what these other universes actually are and how they might be created, where they would be and how we would detect them or locate them. I think this is a great time to introduce our first guest. Hi, I'm Brian Clegg. I am a science writer and I love talking about and writing about science because for me, it's the most exciting thing there is. It tells us how the world works and it shows us how the world is wonderful. He's written loads of books and his most recent one is called What Do You Think You Are? But today, Brian, can you explain a little bit about the universe, this, this one we live in? What, what is the universe anyway? The universe, as we usually think of it, is everything out there, everything out there in space. Um, and we know that our universe appears to have come into existence about 13.8 billion years ago and has been expanding since then. The universe is everything there is. All the galaxies and stars and planets and people and cats and cars. And it stretches out into space right out to, well, I, I don't really know. To be honest, um, it's entirely possible there never will be a way to know uh, because our universe is the limit of what we can experience. We can only see so far out into space. We can say, let's see a long way, you can see about 45 billion light years in each direction. But that's as far as you can see. We can know nothing beyond that because light just hasn't had a chance to get to us. Nothing can get through to us from beyond that. OK, I think we've hit our first snag. The universe is vast, so vast that we need another kind of way to measure it. Instead of miles, we need to use the fastest thing in the universe. The fastest thing in the universe, eh? You know what that is, don't you, Michael? 
It's milk. Come on, come on. Ask me why. Ask me why. <laughs> why? <laughs> it's past your eyes before you see it. <laughs> oh, boom. Oh, boy. Maybe there's a, another universe where your jokes are good, Dan. No, light. <laughs> A, a light year is the distance a beam of light can travel in a year. As light moves through space at 299,792,458 metres per second, one light year is equal to about 6 trillion miles. But as Brian explained, there is a limit to how far we can see. That's right. Uh, we are limited in the end by the speed of light. Nothing can travel faster than light. Um, and because of that, what we know about the universe is what light has brought to us. And the further light travels, the further you're looking back in time. So if light's been travelling towards you for a year, say, what you see is what was happening a year ago. And we can look back further and further towards the Big Bang, towards the origin of our own universe. The Big Bang is what scientists call the start of everything. Most astronomers believe that everything that exists today exploded outwards from this tiny, infinitesimally small point in space 3.8 billion years ago. So this big bang, this huge explosion, formed all of matter, all the tiny building blocks that make up those galaxies, stars, planets, people, etc. And and it also even created the laws of physics. That's the, the rules that govern our universe. So can we actually see the very start of our universe, see the big bang? Unfortunately, if you go back to when the universe was about um, 380,000 years old. Before then, it wasn't transparent. So we actually don't see light from before that point. And what we don't know is what's beyond that. And so one possibility is that actually our universe is it and it either just stops at that point or at least it's the stuff further out there which you can just never know about. But equally, there's nothing to stop there being lots of little universes that all started off and started expanding. If you think of, say, soap bubbles on top of uh, some water, each soap bubble can get bigger and bigger. Uh, so you can imagine the old multiverse idea is that there are lots of universes all expanding, but not interacting with each other. Oh, wow. So this is where the multiverses come in. I think I'm getting the hang of this now. Let's see, the initial Big Bang that created our universe could have also created other universes at the same time, perhaps even a whole universe of universes, like bubbles blowing from a bubble wand. Well, certainly what they might look like, definitely the case. So it's really fun to think of all the possibilities of what might be out there, which could range from anything like, you know, there's nothing in them all, or they could all be a bit like our universe, but a bit different, or they could have totally different physical laws. So our universe, things work in a way that we expect it to work. Light goes at a certain speed. Atoms work in a certain way. And you can imagine that in different universes, in the multiverse, it's possible that those laws are different. And so stuff would operate in a different way. Light might work in a different way or might not exist at all. They could be totally different or very similar if they exist at all. Yes, and each universe would have its own unique laws of physics. I remember when I was a child, crouching, like, crouching down uh, outside and, and looking and seeing, as, an, as, as I look closer, seeing, you know, ants and bugs and mites all crawling around on, in the dirt. And, and to them, just a small bit of soil would be like this enormous mountain. And I'd, I'd wonder to myself, you know, is, is that their own universe, like our, our universe? And is there a bigger one behind us? You know, could there be something looking down with a big finger about to poke me? Um, but, you know, enough of childhood reminiscences. I think, I think the difference, if I understand, Brian, between, between these worlds we're talking about and that kind of ant world of my childhood is that these worlds would just be completely sealed off from all the rest, so there wouldn't be any poking fingers or interference. So I asked Brian if there was anything that would let us draw back the curtain to have a peep or see beyond this limit. Finding some way to see beyond uh, the universe, let alone, uh, let alone travel from one universe to another, is again at the moment really much more science fiction than science fact. I mean, some people would say it's not science at all. It's, it's more science fiction than natural science. It's something fun to think about, but something realistically that we would never be able to actually 
uh, discover the reality. Now, it's just possible there are one or two ways that something could leak through, if you like, uh, and that tends to look back at how things started. So, you know, we know what the universe was like, our universe, very, very early on, a tiny fraction of a second. Um, but what happened just before that tiny fraction of a second isn't known yet. And it's possible with the different ways we're finding to look further and further back in time that we may be able to detect some little echoes, if you like, of what was there before, if there was a before, or how these universes interacted with each other if they do exist. But as yet, it's not something that we can uh, find out with the information we have. It seems to me that we may have reached a dead end in our investigation, Dan. I mean, how on earth do you go about forming an idea about something you can't detect and is impossible to interact with? Where do we go from here? Oh, all is not lost, Michael. Do not fear. You're new to this game, I can see. <laughs> um, <laughs> the, but, the, you know, there's other avenues we can explore. There's another popular multiverse theory, and that's called Many Worlds. So this suggests that new parallel universes are being created all the time. Just like, um, like a fork in the road, our, our world is constantly splitting and dividing. And we've got another very special guest, Who's going to explain all about this idea? I'm Sean Carroll. I'm a theoretical physicist at Caltech and the Santa Fe Institute. And I'm asking questions about the fundamental nature of reality, both from the deepest levels of the emergence of space-time from quantum mechanics, and also bigger picture questions about complexity and layers of reality and how they all fit together. And Sean, I, I have to ask, what exactly is a theoretical physicist? Well, it means that I sit at a table, <laughs> either at my office or or at home or at a coffee shop somewhere and I scribble on a piece of paper or a tablet uh, pictures and equations in an effort to develop a theoretical framework that helps us understand the universe in its largest possible conception. Wow. Well, earlier, Michael, you asked me if I wondered how my life might have been different. And, you know, had I taken different choices? And I'm sure this is something that everyone has spent time thinking about, you know, whether it's something that we regret doing and we wonder whether we could have done differently, or sometimes we might reflect on how lucky we were that, the, you know, the way things turned out. So we put, it, we put this question to Sean and we asked him, where this many worlds ideas come from? Well, it comes out of quantum mechanics, which is extremely well established, right? So it's not like we're just making things up sitting in the room going like, dude, it'd be cool if there were lots of universes out there. Um, what's what's quantum mechanics? Um, you know, the, the one thing I've heard about quantum mechanics is that one of the people who invented the entire science said, I do not like it, and I'm sorry I've ever had anything to do with it. And, and another one, this is obviously when I was Googling what is quantum mechanics, one said, uh, if you're not completely confused by quantum mechanics, you do not understand it. So, um, well, Michael, care to chance your arm explaining what quantum mechanics is? Well, Dan, you've come to the right man because quantum <laughs> mechanics is a branch of physics that is concerned with explaining the strange behavior of subatomic particles. These are the tiniest blips of matter that are way, way smaller than atoms. Now, what's interesting about them is the way that they interact is impossible to predict with total certainty. This is quite different behavior to how the large scale world works. If you're playing pool, for example, you can be confident what will happen when two snooker balls collide or predict exactly where a ball will land if you know the force and angle with which it was thrown not so much with two subatomic particles. Quantum mechanics was established back in the 1920s, and it's always been mysterious. And the reason why it's always been mysterious is because unlike every other theory of physics, when you observe something, when you measure it, there's many possible outcomes you could get, and the probability is what is predicted by the theory, not the actual outcome. And what Many World says is the reason why there's many possible outcomes, but you only observe one, is because what actually happens is every single possible outcome does happen, but in a different universe. And th this, again, is not just uh, a wild speculation. This is the prediction of the fundamental equation of quantum mechanics called the Schrodinger equation. So other interpretations of quantum mechanics erase all those other worlds because they don't like them. Uh, but many worlds just says, look, just obey the equation, listen to it, accept it. And if you take it at face value, you're going to get a copy of the universe every time a quantum measurement is made. 
But what I'd like to know is how is this different from flipping a coin and, you know, creating one world where the coin lands on heads and one world where the coin lands on tails? Well, it's it's both much more minute and also sort of philosophically different. I mean, you know, when you're picking a card or flipping a coin, there is an answer. You just don't know what it is. The probability aspect of things comes about because there's a certain ignorance on our part of the full state of the universe. Whereas in quantum mechanics, they're both real until you observe them. And then what Many Worlds is saying is, and even after you observe them, they're both real, but now in different universes. And this can be a very, very tiny thing. Every time a radioactive nucleus in an atom decays, which happens 5,000 times a second in your body. So that's very, very often. Every time that happens, the universe splits into a universe where the atom decayed and one in which it didn't. So it's happening all the time, all around us. We just don't notice. Wow, that is just, that is mind-boggling. So, so in this many worlds theories, every possibility gets its own universe and every possible outcome plays out. It's, it sounds crazy, like almost unbelievable, but but I can also see why it's so popular with you know with comic book writers. I mean, okay, I, I have to share this with you as well. You'll love this, Michael. So in in my research for this episode, I came across a DC Comics universe. Uh, that's you know Superman, Batman, Wonder Woman, Flash, and all all that lot. Uh, the, and the universe was called Earth Twenty Six. So it's like a version of Earth where all the superheroes are animals. And they call themselves the Zoo Crew, and they're read by, led by Rodney Rabbit, who's um, also known as Captain Carrot. That sounds amazing, but what's your point, Dan? Oh, yeah. Uh, the, the point is, is that, frankly, it all sounds completely bonkers. Um, and, well, we're, we're unafraid to ask dumb questions to very clever people. So um, I put this to Sean Carroll. So uh, the people who are in favour of it, like myself, are going to say... Well, what do you expect? You know, like, who cares about our everyday experience? Why in the world should we meager, puny human beings think that we have access to all of reality just by looking around? The question is not how close can we come to our experience in describing the world, but rather when we have a good theory, what would observers within that theory observe? And in many worlds, even though the predictions are for many, many things we don't observe, the things that it predicts we will observe are very, very close to what we actually do. That's what many worlds is. You know, many worlds is the simplest, most direct, most rigorously formulated underlying version of quantum mechanics. But its predictions are very, very far away from our everyday experience. Oof, this is this is quite profound. So... Let's take stock here for a moment and catch our breaths. I mean, after all, I'm, I'm, I'm a mere, meager, puny human being. Um, so we found out what the, what the multiverse is, tick, and also how other worlds might be created. And in the mul multiple universe idea that Brian Clegg was talking about, these other universes are totally out of reach, beyond the ends of our own universe. And in the many worlds theory, that's the one of the quantum world, the very tiny bits of matter. They just kind of peel off at random. But, but where are these quantum parallel worlds and where should we look for them and how can we find them? That's absolutely true and is crucially important. People are always asking where these other universes are located as if there first exists space and then there are sort of locations in space where the universes are. But that's backwards. Every one of these universes is a universe. Space is inside the universes. So you just have multiple copies of space and they're not separately located anywhere. They're literally parallel, coexisting with each other. But what about all these other me's in all the other worlds? I mean, should I be worried about all these other versions of myself milling about? Because if I've learned anything from the Marvel multiverses is that I'm almost certainly going to be visited by an evil version of myself. What should I do, Sean? Well, I wouldn't worry because you need to update what you mean by yourself. They're not you. They're not versions of you. They are like your twin. You know, an identical twin literally started out from the same single cell that you did, okay, but then branched off. And no one thinks that your identical twin is you or even the person is the combination of both of you, right? They're separate people. 
And in many worlds, it's even worse than that. There are copies of you, but they're different people, and you can never talk with them or interact with them in any way. So honestly, you know, I wouldn't worry much more about them than I do real people in the world that I can talk with and interact with. How are you doing, Michael? Uh, I think my brain might be officially scrambled. I, I love this feeling of having my brain stretched and warped and trying to get my, my head around this. You see, what I want to know now is how likely is this? This is really fun to listen to, but do scientists actually believe in this stuff? So I was a little bit embarrassed to ask um, such an eminent scientist this question. But, you know, for you, our listeners, we'd do anything. So you guessed it. Partway through our conversation with uh, Sean Carroll, I wheeled out our trusty old mysteriometer, our favorite device from series one. So, like, if, if, like Sean, you have no idea what I'm talking about, the mysteriometer is a scale. It goes from zero to 100, with zero being we know nothing about the solution to this mystery, and 100 being, you know, mystery totally solved. And I asked Sean where he thought we were on this 1 to 100 scale. 95. Pow! 95! Just like that, a solid 95! 95! I'm blown away. There's still some questions out there that we have not absolutely pinned down yet, uh, but I can see sketches of how we're going to pin them down. So we're almost there, I would say, in terms of really understanding how many worlds works and how it connects to the real world. So it's a really simple theory. It's very powerful and flexible. It fits the data. What more do you want than that? I think he said it. What more could you want than that? Michael, convinced or do you remain unconvinced? I am convinced. I think I do believe in the multiverse because maybe that means somewhere out there there's a universe where I am a superhero. You're a superhero in, in this universe, Michael, definitely. Oh, damn. <laughs> We'd love to hear what you think, too. Are you a multiverse believer or a many worlds denier? Do you like the idea of there being other yous wandering around the place? even if they're not really you in any sense that we can understand. Email hello at science-nature.co.uk to tell us what you'd most like to be in an alternative reality. And uh, you can even make a short recording and you can hear your voice on a future episode. We'd also love to hear what mysteries you are keen for us to investigate. We're busy planning a whole new series, so now is a great time to get in touch. And remember to pick up the latest copy of the Wheat Junior Science and Nature for even more mysteries of science. We'll be back in two weeks with our next mystery when we'll be asking what strange changes happen to astronauts when they see the whole of our planet for the first time. We'll be on the trail of a strange feeling that could change the future of our planet. Nothing less than that. Until then, stay, stay curious. curious. If you want to get your hands on a copy of the Week Junior magazine, we're offering a six-week free trial. To get yours, head over to dennismags.co.uk forward slash the week junior and use the code podcast.